Hey guys, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Instructional Videos. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through today's chapter. Today we're doing 5.5 organic reactions, condensation, and hydrolysis. Write those two terms down. They never go away. They're extremely, extremely, extremely important in chemistry, but especially in biological chemistry, because your body does this a lot, okay? Which makes sense, right? I mean, look at the word hydrolysis, right? The, the prefix hydro implies water, right? And look at this condensation. Well, condensation also implies the word water. I bet you water has a big deal here. I bet you water is a big deal at this point. So let's check this out. Condensation reaction. Water is produced. Now, when there's condensation on your car window in the morning, water seems to have been produced out of nowhere. It actually came from the air. But water seems to have come from nowhere. But So water was produced. Condensation. Water is produced as two organic molecules are joined together. So you're going to have one molecule here, another molecule here, and they're going to join together. But a byproduct of that reaction is going to be a water molecule. And that's a hydrolysis. Now, when you're doing a, a condensation reaction, you're going to have, almost always, you're going to have an OH group that can be removed and an H group somewhere else that will produce the water molecule. Because remember, water is H2O. So for two molecules to produce H2O, they have to have the parts to do it. Make sense? I think you got it. Hydrolysis. Hydrolysis means water breaking or cutting. Water breaking, water cutting. Hydro means water. Lysis means to break or cut. In this reaction, water is consumed as a reactant. And that water molecule will split a big molecule into two. It'll split a big molecule into two, two smaller ones, okay? But water must be, water must be a reactant. Water must be a reactant. Now, take a gander down here, these two bad boys. As we go from left to right, this is a condensation reaction. We have two molecules on the left, one molecule on the right, and the formation of water and the formation of water. Let me get my ugly mug out of the way. There we go. And the formation of water. So this joins with this, making a larger molecule and, as a byproduct, water. That's a condensation reaction. It made water. It made water. Condensation. All reactions that make water are condensation reactions. Now, we can also go the other way where this molecule here can react with water. The reaction will go this way. And this large molecule right here is broken into smaller ones. That's a hydrolysis or a hydrolysis. Okay, hydrolysis, hydrolysis. Water takes a larger molecule, adds to it, breaks it into two smaller molecules. Hydrolysis, condensation. Builds a molecule, makes, takes two molecules, makes a larger one. Byproduct is water. Uh, hydrolysis, a large molecule reacts with water to make smaller ones. Okay? Pretty good, I hope. Let's take a look at this simple, simple, simple hydrolysis reaction. Let me move my face. Now, this is going to take a very simple, small molecule. Now here we are. This is a very small ester. Very, very small ester. Add water to that. And what you'll get... Now let me, uh, let me make my water a different color. Let me make my water black. There we go. So what you're going to get from this is you're going to get this. And I'm going to put it down here a little bit. Sorry guys, I keep my timer, and it's not even working today. Like, I look like a fool doing this. Ay, ay, ay. And then um, it'll be H O C H3. So that's a hydrolysis reaction. Now, how do I know it's hydrolysis? A larger molecule here plus water gave me two smaller molecules on the right. Now, look at the uh, black ink. Look at the black ink. 
this OH and that H came from that water molecule. It came from that water molecule right there. Okay? So this is a hydrolysis. Hydrolysis. Now, we can also do a condensation reaction. So let's take uh, two different things here. Let's take this carboxylic acid. And we make the color different there. OH. And let's add that then to something like... Now let's use an amine. Why not? Now these are very, very simple condensation reactions. Uh, and condensation and, and hydrolysis reactions, guys. In your body, they are much more complicated. But this is just trying to get you the idea. All right? There we go. Now, the colors matter here. The colors do matter. So here we have the red OH is from there. The blue H is from here. And the black, this black molecule here, black part of the molecule is from here. And the blue part is from over here. And this is a condensation reaction. Sorry, I had to write it at an angle to avoid my face. But this is most definitely a condensation, uh, uh, yes, a condensation reaction. How do I know? Formed water. That's how I know. Pretty easy, huh? It's very, very easy to figure these things out. Notice we have two small molecules here making a large molecule here. I can do better than that. A large molecule here. That's pretty cool. That's how you identify them, guys. It forms water, it makes a bigger molecule. Pretty cool. Pretty easy. Now let's look at some biologically relevant examples, and I think you're going to really enjoy these. Condensation hydrolysis reactions are common biological reactions. In fact, enzymes do these all the time. They basically do a lot of condensation reactions. They do, and hydrolysis reactions, don't get me wrong. They do other things too, but these are you know, kind of the bread and butter reactions here. Uh, the energy molecule ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP through hydrolysis. So let's examine this closely, shall we? Now the hardest thing about organic chemistry for most people is figuring out where the changes are. Like, what changed? Like, I went from here to here, but, but what exactly changed? you got to look closely. Find the things that didn't change, because that's usually the bigger portion of the molecule. For example, this is right here. And this is a... Uh, let me do it differently. Here we go. This part of the molecule is right here. This part of the molecule is right here. So, so far, that hasn't changed. That hasn't changed. But if you look carefully at this phosphate side chain here, you'll notice we have one, two, ah, sorry, come on, go away. We have one, two, three phosphorus. These are phosphate groups. That's where the triphosphate comes from. Over here, we only have one, two, and look, here's my third phosphate right there. It's no longer bonded to the ATP molecule. It's actually gone and become its own phosphate. And now we have only two phosphates. Now it's adenosine diphosphate. Adenosine diphosphate, okay? So it's lost a phosphorus. That's a hydrolysis, hydrolysis reaction. Now if you go this way through the chemical reaction, you actually make the bond between these two bad boys and you put the phosphate back on. That's a condensation reaction. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's a condensation reaction. So going to the right, you make the molecule smaller, and you have a consumption of water hydrolysis. And here's, there's water right there, guys. If you go to the right, you actually will add another phosphate and form water. That's a condensation reaction. All right? It's a very, very important reaction in our body, but it's just a condensation hydrolysis, hydrolysis reaction. It's very, very, very... I don't want to say trivial, but it's a very simple reaction. And that's one of the more important ones we have. Isn't that cool? It's awesome. Uh, carboxylation reaction. Another important uh, reaction you should know. Carboxylation involves the addition of a carboxyl or carboxylic acid group to your molecule. That's what it is. Okay? Now, 
as carbon dioxide moves through the cell, it's probably important to know how carbon dioxide moves through a cell, right? It's probably very important. It is added to and removed from small molecules by two enzymes called carboxylase and decarboxylase. One thing you're going to know about, learn about enzymes, or maybe you've already noticed, is a lot of times enzymes are named after their function. So a carboxylase, well, what do you think that does? It probably puts carboxyl groups, carbonyl, or carboxyl, sorry, or carboxylic acid. It probably puts these groups onto molecules. Now here we go. There's bicarbonate. There's a molecule called pyruvate. They are going to make oxalic, uh, oh, oxaloacetate. Well, some of these words are a little challenging to pronounce, right? Oxaloacetate, okay? And that's a, I would say, a type of um, carboxylation reaction, okay? Pretty cool, huh? Now, the, the movement of CO2 through the body is actually really cool, but this is one of the reactions that take place to do it. Notice, ATP goes to ADP. That's a condensation or a hydrolysis. It's condensation or, come on, think about it. It must be a hydrolysis, right? Because we have one molecule becoming two. Uh, phosphorylation, dephosphorylation. Now, obviously these are very important uh, reactions in the body because ATP kind of works with this a little bit. A phosphorylation is the addition of a phosphate group to a molecule. Dephosphorylation is the removal of a phosphate group. Okay? Remember, phosphate, PO4, phosphate. Now, these there's enzymes that, of course, you know, govern this as well. And they're called phosphorylases. And the ones that do the hydrolysis reaction are called phosphatases. Okay? So a phosphorylase does the condensation reaction, adds the phosphate. A phosphatase does the hydrolysis reaction, removes the phosphate. Two very important enzymes. You're probably going to want to know these for exams and assignments and probably for microbiology. All right, guys, and that is the end of Chapter 5. Now, Chapter 5 was fairly, uh, fairly short compared to the uh, Chapter 3, but no less important and no less difficult because now we're getting into some of the nitty-gritty uh, biochemical reactions that are very, very important for you uh, in your future, probably doing micro and also moving forward into uh, more challenging and difficult uh, coursework. All right, guys, so now with that, I want to wish you guys good luck and good chemistry.